Good morning and welcome to St. Mary's Church here in Richmond, to those online and especially to those here in person. When I stand here and listen to the, the bells at eight o'clock, I think about the days when I didn't work as a priest and I didn't know that there were two eight o'clocks in the day. But it's beautiful to be here anyway. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And we say together, Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, have mercy upon the whole church, and so rule the heart of thy chosen servant, Elizabeth, our queen and governor, that she, knowing whose minister she is, may above all things seek thy honor and glory, and that we and all her subjects, duly considering whose authority she hath, may faithfully serve, honor, and humbly obey her in thee and for thee, according to thy blessed word and accordance, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth ever one God, world without end. Amen. And our collect for today. O oh Lord, we beseech you mercifully to hear the prayers of your people who call upon you and grant that they may both perceive and know what things they ought to do and also may have grace and power faithfully to fulfill them through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. first lesson is um, written in the letter of James. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness, born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of the righteous is sown in peace for those who make peace. 
Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your craving that are at war within you? You want something to do not. You, you want something and do not have it. So you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it. So you engage in disputes and conflict. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Desist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Here endeth the lesson. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. After leaving the mountain, Jesus and his disciples went on, there, uh, went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another, Who was the greatest? He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all, and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. As Bishop John says every time he does this, I don't know why the notices are at this stage. It seems really strange, but the notices are. And there's quite a lot going on. Um, this evening at 630 um, we have Free to Be, which is going to be led by Scott, um, so all are welcome to that. Um, next week, more importantly, Funky Church, Peter Rabbit 2 is the movie this, this week, so uh, um, Peter Rabbit 1 went down really well, um, and all are welcome, including dogs. Um, Harvest Festival, 3rd of October, um, check your new sheets, uh, your pew sheets, 
There will be some coming down um, and will be some in church uh, later. Um, also, 2 p.m. today in the Friary Gardens, um, the Royal British Legion Centenary Parade. Again, all are welcome to that. Uh, it should be a great show of pride in Richmond. Um, and Friday, 7 p.m., uh, the Harvest Festival is um, taking place at Downham. Um, so, again, all are welcome. It would be great to see people there and um, uh, with all the provisions. There you go. There's lots of other things on the pew sheet, but uh, I shan't bore you. So let us pray. Lord, may these words from my lips and this meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight. Amen. The internet is full of rubbish. And I always seem to find it when I'm supposed to be writing a sermon. I will acknowledge to one uh, failing, this sermon was written at about one o'clock this morning. It was finished about one o'clock this morning. So last night I stumbled upon the gem of a story. And it must be true because it's on the internet. And I love it. Now the story can be found in a number of different titles. The first one I found was titled Chicken Cannon, but my favourite, Rooster Booster. So this was in an issue of Meat and Poultry magazine, uh, um, where editors quoted a magazine called Feathers, which is a publication in California, um, which aims its uh, readership to the Californian poultry industry. And that is true. I did check that. So that is true. Both of those sound amazing, amazing magazines. And they were telling of a story. The US Federal Aviation Authority has a unique device for testing the strength of windshields on airplanes. The device is a gun that launches a dead chicken at a plane's windscreen at approximately the same speed that a plane would fly. Now, the theory is that if the windscreen doesn't crack from the carcass impact, it'll survive a real collision with a bird during flight. Sounds reasonable. Now, it seems that the engineer some time ago, uh, when British Rail existed, thought this was also an interesting idea. And we're interested to see when they tested the windscreens of their new, fast, speedy locomotive. So they borrowed the rooster booster, loaded it with a chicken, and fired it. Okay, no sound effects. The ballistic chicken shattered the windscreen of the train, broke the driver's chair, and embedded itself in the back wall of the train cabin. The safety engineers were stunned. Arguments ensued. Whose fault was it? People came up with explanations, some far-fetched, others were clearly well thought through, but still, from far from explaining what had happened. So they went back to the American aircraft engineers and asked them to review the video footage. And the engineers had one recommendation. Defrost the chicken first. Now, you'll rightly be wondering what theological nuggets I can grasp from such a story. Well, firstly, please don't try this at home. Secondly, I, for one, am always heartened by any Bible passage that suggests Jesus calls the little children to him. The fact that I laughed for quite a while, an unreasonable length of time, if I'm honest, at this story can demonstrate how childlike I am, or at the very least, my sense of humor. But it also demonstrates how easy it is to not understand, despite many years of study, and also ignore the obvious. Now, the scientists had clearly not understood, and scorn and ridicule was thrown their way from the guys and girls at the Federal Aviation Labs. 
I'm sure there, were, there was little question in their minds as to who was the greatest among them. Now, this is a question that we hear um, in our gospel reading today, and it's a question that I'm sure we've asked ourselves from time to time. Am I as good as other curates? Please don't answer that. Is that teacher better than me? Or maybe we've said confidently, I am the greatest curate, or I am the greatest teacher, and so on. Our gospel tells us such an argument as Jesus and his disciples came to Capernaum. Jesus challenged them. He asked them, what are you arguing about? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued about who was the greatest. It sounds silly when you put it into context. Another story for you. As a chilling um, reminder of 20 years ago, I was watching a documentary about 9-11. And the reporter was talking to a guy who had just who on the day had just managed to get out of the tower before it collapsed. Now, this guy was strong, handsome, very similar to me. There should be no laughs at that point. But, and, but he was a strong, handsome, healthy guy, fit. And he could have got out of the tower really quickly. But he chose to help others. People who were slower than him. One man was in a wheelchair. Another lady had burns to her face so she couldn't see to get out. The reporter asked him, why did you decide to do this when you risked your own life? He shrugged his shoulders and replied, it's no big deal. It's what we're supposed to do. Can you imagine a world if everyone had the same attitude? Can you imagine a church if everyone had the same attitude? It's those kingdom-minded thinkers who change the world. Those who forgive, those who love and go the extra mile, live righteously, not out of a sense of obligation, not because they're trying to earn their salvation, not to be seen by others, but because that's what they're supposed to do. Now, the Lord may not use us in such gallant ways, but simply the simple, humble acts that show compassion towards other people. These, these are not done for personal gain. They're done out of an overflow of God's love in us and for God's glory. Jesus argued that the way to be successful or to get ahead in the spiritual world is to become like a child. I mean, Jesus' time, children and women were seen as little more than property. Little children were considered useless until they were old enough to help with housework. In other words, they were humble and lowly. The child in this passage represents all God's people. The greatest people in God's kingdom are not rich or powerful, but the poor and the helpless. Not the ones with the most servants, but those who serve others the most. And Jesus argued that if we help those who are humble, lowly, poor or oppressed, we will be successful from a heavenly point of view. So, it can be difficult for us to let go of our desire to succeed in earthly ways. It's part of our human nature for us to be in control. We want to be independent. We want to be in control of our lives and our goals. And this includes the desire to succeed. We need to let go and let God control our destiny and our successes if we want to be first in his eyes. 
We need to let go of our desire to get ahead and replace it with a desire to serve others whilst accepting that true faith is not about church doctrine or power or privilege. It's not about wearing a dog collar even. It's about service to others. Service to the point of sacrifice. Each and every day we will have the opportunity to show how Christ's love can bring healing to a hurting world. The only way we can do this clearly is with great humility. Coming to this world just as Jesus did when he set the little child among his disciples. So, shrug your shoulders when asked why you do this and simply say, it's what we're supposed to do. And please do try this at home. Amen. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Lord God, we thank you for this new day. We thank you for our ability to come together in worshipping you. We thank you for our freedoms here in Richmond and Hudswell and Downham and Mask to do so in safety, in fellowship, coming together as a family of faith. As we do so, we offer our prayers to those we know in need of prayer. And especially today, Joy and Don Hornsby, Barbara Hill, Hillary, Amber Squires, Carol Ward, Sheila, and Lucy. And we take a moment of silence to offer our own prayers to those known only to us. As we do, we offer our own prayers and, and ask for your loving grace to surround those who mourn and to, today we give thanks for the lives of Jean Dollymore, Bill Villiers, Nori Vitti, Margaret Roach, Mary Allison, and in this the week of the anniversary of their passing. Peter Glue, Rex Bassendale, Frank Stockton. And Lord, we acknowledge that there are more, many more, who we don't name today, who we do remember, and who you have called home. We thank you for the impressions they've made on our lives the love that they've shown us and allowed us to show them. 
a love which is everlasting. May they all rest in peace and rise in glory. Almighty and everlasting God, who by thy holy apostles has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto, unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all they do confess thy holy name, may agree in the truth of thy holy word, and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes, and governors, and especially thy servant Elizabeth, our queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto her whole counsel and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and impartially minister justice to the punishment of the wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may both, by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments, and to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and specially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and true reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy great goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all, the, all of them who are in this transitory life in a, are in trouble, are in sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Yea, that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, Draw near with faith and take his holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. We say together, Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent, and we are heartily sorry for these our misdoings, the remembrance of which is grievous unto them. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all of them with their hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ
Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have eternal and everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to re be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation of our sins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And we pray together. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same, Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption? Who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for sins of the whole world? And did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memory of that his precious death, until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receive these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace.
Let us pray. Almighty God, you have taught us through your Son that love is the fulfillment of the law. Grant that we may love you with our whole heart and our neighbours as ourselves. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy humble servants, entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept that this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits of the death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we are all thy whole church, may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and our bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that all we, who are partakers of thy holy communion, may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins, to offer unto thee our sacrifice. Yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Please stand for our glory in excelsis. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you all, and those you love today and forevermore. Amen.